This looks like a fairly tranquil scene. You wouldn't think it was a highly dangerous place, but it is. On the railway you need to keep your wits about you and obey simple but essential rules designed for your safety. Trains can approach very quietly, almost unheard until the last moment. More so if visibility is poor, it's windy, or there are other noises. Travelling at speeds up to 140 miles per hour, they need at least one and a quarter miles to stop, so it doesn't pay to get in their way. You can't help others if you're injured or killed yourself. Most trains have powerful headlights and can be seen at great distances by day and night. Some trains have yet to be fitted with these headlights. However, all trains have some portion of the front painted yellow to make them more visible to people on or about the track. The first rule which applies to everyone, including railwomen, is don't go on the track unless you have to. When called to an accident or incident, you may have to, so the first essential is to get to know the railway environment. Then you'll know what to do. For a start, not every line is the same. Some are single tracks like this one. Trains pass in both directions, so you need to be particularly alert. Here, on a double track line, Trains normally use the left-hand track in the direction of running, but don't rely on it. One line could be blocked because of accident or engineering work. The other track would then be used by trains in both directions. In busy areas, there are multiple tracks used by trains traveling in various directions. Never venture onto these lines unless you have an assurance from the railway authorities that all trains have been stopped and it is safe to do so. In all these situations, there can be additional hazards such as viaducts, tunnels and curves which can reduce sighting of approaching trains and provide little or no clearance at the side of the track. Fire brigades should familiarise themselves with local BR geography, paying particular attention to access points to railway territory. You should also take every opportunity to participate in planned emergency exercises. Again, getting to know the railway environment. The movement of trains is controlled by signalmen. In some areas working from fairly closely spaced mechanical signal boxes. More often nowadays though, a modern power signalling centre will control large areas of railway extending over many miles. Telephones are to be found on signal posts and at other locations like level crossings. However, emergency services should normally make contact through their own HQ control room. Roger Bravo 2-1, we will notify British Rail. All fire personnel are now clear of the line, over. Many lines are electrified on the 25,000 volt AC overhead system. Others may be electrified on the 750 volt DC third rail system. or the 630 volt DC fourth rail system like that used by the London Underground. Now to some basic railway terms which are important to remember. The cess, this is the area on each side of the track clear of the ballast. The four foot way, this is the area between the running rails. Now let's look at the terms applied to a double track. Once again, the cess is the area at the outer edge of each running line. The four-foot way is the area between each pair of running rails. And the six-foot way, the area in the centre between the two tracks. This is a very dangerous area and should be avoided at all costs. The same terms apply to multiple track areas, except that we have an additional six-foot way between each pair of tracks. But the most important term to remember is your position of safety. 
This is a position in the cess, as far away from the track as you can get, but at least three metres from the nearest rail on which a train is approaching. OK, so now you've been called to an incident on the railway. What do you do? First, whenever possible, obtain permission from the railway authority through your headquarters control centre. 306, in attendance, rail incident, one level crossing, over. On both lines between Winnish and early stations, correct, over. Let them know where you are. There are a number of different features which you can use to identify your location, like the number on an overhead line structure, a milepost, a bridge number, or the number plate of a signal. Your headquarters will pass this location identification to the railway control centre. If you consider that there is a need for trains to be stopped on any line, or for the electric traction power to be switched off, explain why. Make any request to British Rail through your own control. Bravo 2 one understand. Request British Rail to isolate traction power supply. And Bear in mind the effect on our train service when making such a request. Cutting off the traction current can stop all electric trains within a 15 mile area. Diesel trains will continue to run unless you specifically ask for them to be stopped too. Do you need trains stopped on all lines? Perhaps it's only necessary for trains to run at caution on lines adjacent to the one with which you are concerned. BR will only stop all trains if it's really necessary, so you'll have to justify your requirements. When these arrangements have been made, you'll be told. If you require all trains to be stopped, say so. Also, remember switching off electrical power will only stop electric trains, and even these may coast for some distance. Wait clear of the line until you have been assured that what you have asked for has been done. Don't make any assumptions. Once we know what you need, the arrangements can be made fairly quickly. But trains already in the area may have to be allowed to clear first. OK, now you're ready to go onto the track, or are you? You must wear your high visibility tabard at all times, whether trains have been stopped or not, and make sure it's securely done up. These tabards enable train drivers to see you. They'll sound the horn to warn you of their approach. When this happens, move immediately to a position of safety. Remember the three-meter rule. Acknowledge the driver's warning by raising your arm. He wants to know that you've heard him. If you have a BR lookout with you, always follow his instructions. But whether or not you're accompanied, always obey these simple rules. Where possible, walk in the cess facing the direction of oncoming trains. Be vigilant, a train may approach in either direction. Don't cross the line unless you have to. If you do, then always use a bridge, subway or level crossing if there is one. If you have to cross the line elsewhere, do so where you have a good view of approaching trains. Look and listen. Don't cross where there are points. They could move suddenly, setting you off balance, or worse still, trapping your foot. Cross quickly but carefully, stepping over rails, not on them, and walking on the ballast, not the sleepers, which are often slippery. Beware of cables and wires or anything else which could cause you to trip. And don't forget your position of safety when you reach the other side. Don't attempt to enter a tunnel unless you're sure that trains have been stopped or you have a BR lookout with you. Make sure your hand lamp is working and remember that your radio probably won't work inside the tunnel. Between the tunnel mouth and the first refuge there is no position of safety. Before proceeding make sure that nothing is approaching and that you can reach this refuge before a train does approach. These red and white signs indicate where line side clearance is limited. Make sure you can clear these areas before a train approaches, especially if you have to walk in the four-foot way. If a train should approach, get to the cess and lie down if there is no other position of safety. The blue and white sign indicates that no clearance or refuge exists at all on this side of the track.
Fire brigades will additionally provide their own lookouts. When a lookout blows the warning horn, move immediately to a position of safety. Should a major accident occur, BR will appoint an incident officer to liaise with all emergency services. He is easily identifiable by his special tabard printed with the words BR Incident Officer. Always regard the overhead line and its associated equipment as being live and keep at least three meters away from the overhead line equipment unless you have an assurance from a BR official that the current has been switched off. Even then there could still be a small residual voltage. Don't climb structures or onto vehicles and be especially careful if you have to walk on an embankment close to these wires. Always carry long items like ladders or stretchers horizontally. If it's necessary to deal with a person who is or has been in contact with the overhead equipment the following procedure should be adopted. If the casualty is completely below the live wires and no part of the body is nearer than one meter it's not essential for the current to be switched off and it's perfectly safe to touch the person since no electrical charge will be retained by the body. The casualty may be pulled clear provided that the rescuer ensures, for his own safety, that nothing worn or carried, including the casualty, comes within one meter of the live wires. If the casualty is not completely below the live wire, or is closer than one meter, it's absolutely essential that the current be switched off before you approach or touch him. You must have positive assurance from the railway authorities that the overhead line has been switched off and that it's safe to approach the casualty. When asking for the current to be switched off through your HQ control, you must first state that it's an emergency, then give your name, rank and the emergency service to which you belong. Say exactly where you are and explain why you need the current switched off. State positively if you're waiting to render life-saving assistance. Finally, you must stay in contact until you've received the assurance that the current is off and it's safe to approach. Once you have the assurance that the overhead current has been switched off, remember there may be a small residual voltage present. For this reason, before touching any part of the overhead line equipment, you must make quite sure, for your own safety, that your hands are covered with something dry which will not conduct electricity. As with overhead electrical equipment, you should always regard the conductor rails and all train collector shoes as live unless you have an assurance that the current has been switched off. On third rail systems, the conductor rail is located immediately outside one of the running rails. On fourth rail systems, the positive or live rail is in the same place as in third rail systems, but in the center of the forefoot is the negative or return conductor. Treat both of these as live. Be particularly careful if flood water is near the conductor rails. To get the current switched off, adopt the same procedure as for overhead equipment. In an emergency rescue, where the casualty is touching the conductor rail, if possible, get the traction current switched off before you touch him. If this is not possible, cover your hands with some effective insulation, like rubber gloves or dry clothing. Stand on dry, non-conductive material, such as a Macintosh, newspaper, wood, or in this case dry concrete. If none of these options is available, don't touch the casualty, but push or pull him clear using dry rope or a piece of dry wood. Don't use anything metal. In case of fire in electrified areas, don't direct water jets onto live conductor rails or overhead lines. You shouldn't normally cross lines equipped with conductor rails unless you have an assurance from BR that the traction current has been switched off. If you do have to cross in an emergency, if possible, cross where there is a proper walkway or a gap in the conductor rail. As a last resort, if you have to cross where there is no gap or walkway, step over all rails with great care and pay particular attention to stepping over both the outer running rail and the adjacent conductor rail in one step. Don't allow anything you're wearing or carrying to touch the conductor rail. As more modern passenger rolling stock is introduced, we are replacing the old-fashioned slam doors with power-operated sliding or plug doors. 
In an emergency, these doors can be opened from the outside of the train by turning the emergency door control valve. These will open the doors immediately adjacent. Driving cab doors can be opened in the same way. Some trains which operate in single bore tunnels, where side access would not be possible in an emergency, have center emergency doors at each end. These are normally locked for security reasons, but can be opened using your budget key. Every passenger train carries emergency equipment, such as a rope, axe and crowbar, as well as a first aid box. All trains carry fire extinguishers. In an emergency, detonators are used to protect the site. Another good reason for stepping over rails, not on them. If you see a train approaching detonators, keep at least 30 meters clear. Detonators are explosive charges, resulting in flying fragments. When called to a fire or accident involving dangerous goods, firefighters should wear chemical protection suits as a matter of course. An illustrated leaflet is available detailing information sources for dangerous goods conveyed by British Rail. To gain the fullest information, you may consult the BR Pink Pages instructions, a copy of which is held by your headquarters. In a major railway accident, where a number of casualties may be trapped inside deformed or severely damaged vehicles, it may be necessary to rescue casualties by first cutting into the structure of such a vehicle. Some of BR's earlier passenger coaches were insulated with asbestos. BR can tell you quickly if any vehicle contains this substance, but take no chances. Some electric locomotives and trains are fitted with capacitors filled with polychlorinated biphenyls, known as PCBs. If a capacitor is damaged, there is risk of contamination. Flame cutting in the vicinity of PCB-filled equipment should be avoided unless chemical protection suits are worn. Although we are removing PCB-filled equipment, you should always take appropriate precautions unless you have an assurance that PCBs are not present. Before using emergency equipment on any locomotive or power car, you should ensure that the pantograph, where applicable, is lowered and the battery isolating switch is in the off position. This film has been made to help you and your colleagues remain safe when on or about railway tracks. Always remember your own position of safety. Walk in the cess and face oncoming traffic. Look and listen for your own safety and for the safety of others about you. Remember to regard electric lines as live unless you have a positive assurance that they've been switched off. Don't make assumptions for yourself or for others. Always wear your high visibility tabard. Be seen, be alert, be safe to save.